All right, today's video is on rotational kinetic energy. Uh, you got to think about the fact that for everything we've talked so far, for everything for straight lines, you got to think if there's a kinetic energy, and this kinetic energy formula here is in reference to, you know, any particle traveling. It could be a molecule of gas. It could be a car going down a road. But now I want you to think about like a bowling ball rolling down the rain. It's got two kinetic energies. Think about that bowling ball and its ability compared to another object. You've got to take into account that there's not just one kinetic energy. For every equation we ever have in straight line world, it's got to have an equivalent in circle world. So I write KER and it's for kinetic energy rotational. And the equation is just one half. And you got to think, the rotational equivalent of M is I, because remember, when something's rotating, it's not just its mass, but it's how its mass is distributed. So that's why we use the moment of inertia. And instead of straight line velocity, V, we use the symbol for rotational velocity, which is an omega. So we'll write one half IW squared. And there's our equation. And some of the simplest problems you'll be asked to work in physics books will literally just ask you to find this rotational kinetic energy. And it'll be that straightforward. Some of them will give you an I. Um, I think probably the most classic example of a question, let's draw a flywheel here. The most classic example of a question usually is something like this. Uh, a problem will give you a wheel and it might give you a radius let's say that we've got a radius of this wheel of one meter just to keep it relatively simple so we got a flywheel of radius one meter uh it has a mass of 10 kilograms it's a pretty heavy flywheel now the only thing the problem might do to try and make it a little fancier this problem might come in and be like you've got an initial velocity it starts from rest and then it has an angular acceleration of 5 rads per second square for a time of 2 seconds. No sense getting crazy with numbers here. And then they'll want you to find this rotational kinetic energy. So all it will be doing is it's giving you this just to make you go to a little bit extra trouble and try and establish what that angular velocity is. And then all we're going to do is plug it into this equation. So what you would end up doing here is, well, we know that W, or omega, is equal to omega O plus alpha T. And so we've got 0 plus 5 times 2. I love making up questions myself. 5 times 2, 10 rads per second. Uh, sometimes you might work on these problems. They might give you revs per second or RPMs just to make you do, because the problem by itself is so easy they usually the textbook goes out of the way to find the way to make it more hard make it more hard wow that's fascinating use of grammar but anyway that's usually what happens in there and so like in this one now all we've got to do is come back in here i've got everything i need if i want to find the rotational kinetic energy of this flywheel one half iw square so one half now, what is I for a flywheel like this? All the mass is distributed on this outer edge. So this would be an MR square. And if it gave you a disk, you would write one half times one half MR square. So you'd end up with a fourth MR square. But anyway, just pay attention to your I when you're doing these problems. And then let's see, MR square, W square. So one half mass of 10 times 1 square times 10 square. Let's see if we can get away without using a calculator here. Let's see, it looks like 5 times 1 times 100. We've got an answer of 500. Your unit is joules. So there, that is like your most basic type of question. Now, what a problem is usually going to do is this. I think of it like a bowling ball type of question. But this is a more common type of question. To take problems you've done in the past, like an object going up a hill or an object going down the hill, and now make you take into account that this ball has a mass m radius r in this question. So now we've actually, we're trying to make it a little bit more realistic. 
Because if this object is rolling down the plane, there's a little bit more to it. Now, there's two ways we can do this one. We can work it with just like you learned in Unit 5 and use work done by gravity. And, and I'll, I'll just do it both ways a little bit. Or we can use more of a common sense. Uh, you got to look. This ball is at the top of this incline, and it's got to roll down. Here's the thing I want you to think about. When this ball gets to the bottom of the incline, it's got two velocities. The ball has a tangential velocity or a translational velocity, however you want to say it. And the ball also has, this ball is actually rotating now as it rolls down through here. So this ball also has an angular velocity as it's rotating. That means when the ball gets to the bottom of this hill, it's got two kinetic energies. That means it's got a one-half mv squared at the bottom of the hill. And it's also got a one-half iw squared when it gets to the bottom of the hill. That's the only thing different in this problem. There's two ways we could work it. One way, uh, we could go back and we could work it like this. Work net equals delta ke. But here's the thing. Now you've got to take into account there's two kinetic energies. I'm going to put a little T for that one for the plain old straight line kinetic energy. And you got to think that there is also a kinetic energy rotational in there. That's a terrible looking R. But anyway, so we've got two kinetic, that's one way. And then you could say, well, you've got work done by gravity equals two. So we end up with MGY initial minus MGY final equals one half MV squared minus one half MVO squared. Oh my goodness, plus one half IW squared minus one half IWO, running out of room, squared. Now that would be a 100% official textbook them here. And then what we do is come back and say, well, this work done by gravity, well, let's see, that would be a zero for that. Let's see, your velocity initial VO is zero. And for that matter, your WO initial is zero. And it pretty much just leaves you with this MGY and what we've got right here. Now, some people might also look at this and take a very, very simple approach and just say energy is not created or destroyed. What kind of energy does this object have at the top of the hill? Well, it's just got a potential energy. At the top of the hill, it's got a potential of MGY. When the ball gets to the bottom of the hill, that potential is turned into a one-half mv square and a one-half iw square, which this common sense approach, if you look, is pretty much the same equation. It's just this negative. And that's because in this equation, my y would be like a negative 2, which cancels a negative anyway. Y'all... This is basically this problem right here. If the problem was rolling up the hill, the equation would look the same way. This question's wanting me to find V. And you can see right now I've got V and a W in here. All I've got to do is do a little bit of work right here. This is going to be, stick with me on this, MGY equals one-half MV squared plus one-half, what is I? A ball of mass... Now, I'm going to assume that this ball is solid. If so, I for a solid is solid ball, or sphere is two-fifths, m r squared. And now I'm going to do one more thing. I don't want to know W. I want to know V. Well, I know that V is R W, so I can substitute V over R in for that W and have V square over, now check this out, R square. Hey, I see some fishiness going on in this problem. This R square cancels that R square. Well, that's handy. All of a sudden, I look, mass, mass, and mass in every single term. Mass, mass, mass. This big old beast of a problem is canceled out to GY equals one-half V squared plus, 
what we got here? Two, oh, well, two one-fifths V squared. There, there's all my problem. It said that the hill was two meters tall in this question. So this is 9.8 times 2 equals, I'm going to factor V square out. One half plus one fifth V square. Oh my goodness, is that all this is? Let's see, well that's 19.6 over there. Let's see, this would be 5 over 10 plus 2 over 10. So equals 7 tenths V square. So what is 19.6 divided by 7 tenths is 28. Don't forget to take a square root. Square root answer equals 5.3 meters per second. That's it. That's as hard as any of these questions get. And look at what happened. Most of it canceled out. How can I say it any more than this? These problems are not hard. They're not supposed to be hard. All you're going to do is, anytime you normally said, work the problem, and you said that something equals one half mv square, if that object is rolling, all you've got to do is add one half iw square onto it and the physics is done. That is it. The end of the story at that point. Uh, for i, plug in either mr square, half mr square, two fifths, two thirds, whatever the situation. Most of the time you're going to end up going in right there and plugging in v over r in place of that w so that you have like variables in there and have two translational velocities instead of that. Anyway, that is it though for doing rotational kinetic energy. Look, rotational kinetic energy. Da da. Oh, I guess it's too late now. If you don't know it by now, it's over. But if you notice, it's got two kinetic energies. It's going that way, but it's rolling while it's doing it. Hey, remember that Limp Biscuit song? Rolling, 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 rolling. I, I should probably just quit. Bye, y'all.